Hey, Nick Tana here with another interview. It's been a long time, but um, I wanted to interview this next person who I've recently gotten to know and is also um, starting out with his VTubing Twitch journey, and that is Vio. Hello, Vio. Glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have I should have set it up better. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. No, no, it's all good. So, a little bit of backstory of how this came to be. Um, I have been binging Vio for quite some time and um, been trying to do as much as I can to sort of um, do my part in support and trying to plug the 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 um, creations that he does and the overall um, Twitch journey that he's begun. And the best way I, and why I even did the interview... Um, playlist was for that reason to show support of people that I watch and I find hidden gems that I find. So without further ado, I will start the questions so you can get to know this creator. <laughs> so who is Viotritz? So Viotritz is basically well, it's me. <laughs> um, where like I rather be. Beatrice rather than myself if you could and it's not like myself as in like um um uh, gosh how do I say it it's more like um an extension mm -hmm. or like um my but for life, yourself it's not like my yeah it's like um I, it's my personality different story though and it's just, well, me as a different entity. Though, oh, it's like the thought processes and stuff like that are different. But yeah, like, it's, <laughs> it's my raccoon -y self. <laughs> How did the name come to be? Oh, God, that's the fun one. <laughs> so, Viotritz was a work in progress. So I had a list of names and I've always went with like, and part of it was usernames on the internet because, oh, it's so hard to find a unique, uh, one that's quote unquote unique. So I was going, what is the least common letter that I would see? So, firstly, um, one of the names I used was Valhallen, and that was more of a D&D &D character. Valric, same sort of thing. And uh, Valrin, and then I was like, okay, no, I need something, something different. And um, I uh, said, well, I did all sorts of like VAL names. And then I was like, okay. So let's go V and then think of a um like an A E I O U. So it's like V E O V O and so where is Tritz come in? Well, I was screwing around with letters and just going this doesn't sound good. This doesn't sound good. Tritz? Okay. Okay. And there was others that I was leaning more towards to, but yeah, it just stuck. <laughs> Feel Tritz just stuck, so that's where it just goes down to. It was funny because, like, when I first heard it, I was I thought it was Be like Beatrix from Final Fantasy IX, which was one of my favorite characters, along with Kuja. But I just found it <laughs> interesting, so that's why I've, I had to ask. But what about like Beatrix what, is a good character? <laughs> what made you start your creative journey? Like starting with Vio and then wanting to go into like creating or creating in that in that um with that persona and then on to VTubing and streaming in general. So way, 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 um, when I was more in elementary school and stuff like that, 
And no, I didn't have a Sona back then, but I was always the overthinker. I always had my head in quote unquote the clouds. And before ADHD became more universal, I I was well, no, it, it was becoming the universal thing, annoyingly enough. But I was dated to have ADD, aka I space out, but my brain doesn't. I, so I was always on, like, creating things, and when, <laughs> when I was playing the Devil's Game, aka Dungeons and Dragons of way back when, <laughs> thank, <Devil's game. laughs> thank you, my, <laughs> you know exactly what I mean, it's like, oh my god, <laughs> there's magic, there's demons, ah, yeah, no, magic, just even that word back in the day, I remember, like, I see, just when you said that, it's just, I, I was like, God, I remember when, how many people used to get triggered just from hearing that fucking, the word magic, like, just anywhere. Oh, they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, um, the sort of thing was, like, I was always making games. Like, um trying to make my own card game of way back when, trying to make my own board game and stuff like that. I I was a gamer through and through and everything else bored me. <laughs> like, like, if it had to deal with math, I enjoyed it. If it was English, I was kind of eh. <laughs> Sciences were always fun, but mm -hmm. it's like I always kind of created my own fiction through and through. Even, and some of which was like, wow, I wish this was real. <laughs> the world would be psychotic as hell, but I wish it was real. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the dragons. They need to fly overhead. That sort of thing. Yeah. Um, But, like, then come up to say, my Sona, right? Mm -hmm. So it turned into a question because I ran into the furry fandom like, oh, actually it was more like middle school, but I wasn't necessarily settled. Initially I was going with uh, Coyote, but then I hmm. saw how many canines there were and went, God, no. <laughs> because it's like, People, you know, like, um, there's a normal everyday person and you just, like, I would rather see something different than mm -hmm. something samey. And by that time, raccoons were not common, but I was thinking something towards my own personality. The reason for the coyote aspect was because I'm a bit of a trickster. Mm -hmm. um, and granted, one of my other friends said, well, you struggle so much in school and you deal with a lot of horrible things and yet you're struggling just to be a survivor. Like, you are pushing to survive. So I was thinking, so what's the best animal that could be viewed as a trickster, but also survivalist? Well, raccoons. Did the mask they of a raccoon do... help? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> like, I always liked ringtails and masks, that's for sure. <laughs> and um, the thing is, also being someone that likes to... Uh, do makeup and stuff for Halloween. Mm -hmm. Making a raccoon mask was easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would just do um, a fur texture face paint. So, yeah. I had way too much fun in Halloween. There's no stopping it. So what made you go from that to wanting to put that as your PNG that would later become your VTuber? Um... Like I stated, I'd rather be VO rather than myself. So I always 
pushed forward the image of Viotritz as me. Yeah. So it was going to happen one way or another. <laughs> um, if you talk to anyone that knows me, they tend to, they call me either by my last name or Vio. Mm -hmm. Vio being the most common one. Vio Tritz kind of like being a full name moniker. So, yeah. Um, I just, I just rather be me in a different skin, so to say. Because that's, see, that was the, the interesting part is I didn't, like, when I first wandered in to find you, I had seen you around before. Your name was familiar, but there was a part of me that was a little shocked because I was like, wait, I haven't subscribed to this person. And why is it that I know this person's name so much? And yet I don't even know what the fuck they're about. And then I saw your your um little icon. It was a raccoon. And I was like, oh, my God, there's a furry and fucking gingers thing. And so I, I, guess I thought that was the only one. And um, when I went in and I was like, and originally this is the part for the viewers that might find this a little funny is like originally when I went in there I was like okay I'm not I don't when I when I when I meet new people I and especially I'm very strict on who I sub to or sub slash follow depending on the platform who I binge and who I can stand because most of the time I can't stand a lot of fucking people they drive me insane because I don't like people <laughs> and um it really does take like hidden like what I say like hidden gems like when I found like Danny and stuff like that there are just people that I'm like okay I I like the people that are just starting out because they're they're still in that humbled state that that um excitement and wonder and it's a beautiful thing to watch and especially when you want to see them grow and just wondering how they're not popular already and it's a wonderful thing so when I saw your like your streaming I was like huh Okay, you have a nice setup. You got a PNG, and you your your voice had confidence. So I was like, "Hmm, this is it, it." Didn't compute with me. So it had a bit of a Danny effect all over again. Of um, just like wondering, like, okay, this person is way more like organized than I I I was expecting. So when I was watching, I was waiting to see what clicked because at first I was like. This person sounds really, and I again, this is, we've had this talk of you. We've your your confidence talk, yeah. sounded so pompous at points. And here's the thing: for people that have that, there is an attractiveness to it in people that like to search for that that like that that towering personality. As I've just as I was describing, though, it wasn't until I made myself more known i guess like when i started doing small talk that i saw more i think i can't remember if i subscribed before or after i made myself known but there was something that you said that clicked um and you i forgot you if I... followed me after we talked okay because um because it was uh like it you started talking to me and i was uh going oh there's actually a person here that other yes. than okay. like yeah uh, it that honestly shocked me <laughs> that see, that's <laughs> because the part you you were like the first one out of that was outside my friend group that actually showed up yeah see that was the part so, yeah. that also made it more like when i heard the the shift in your voice there was a point where it wasn't the it didn't it was it there was that confidence and you know again you you have that that even till this day there's still that but I have a you know we've we've had this discussion but for me it was when you were excited and it, I heard the sort of like that that feeling of like oh my god someone's here that that's why I hit the subscribe because I was like all right that that right there that interested me of like all right this person. Their, their voice is confident, but they still are not like just like completely up their own ass to the point where it's like they expect people. You know what I mean? Like some people that do have that's like sort of like a rhetorical question of like, of course you're following me, you know? <laughs> so, uh, well, it, in my head, it's <clears throat> like, oh my god, someone's here. As yeah. as part of me was like, oh no, someone's here because it's like, um, I was never expecting anyone, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, and I was, and I told you this, yeah. um, I only started streaming because Jack Jokers pushed me to it to get me out of my own shell because like you, I'm, 
not really a people person. And Mm -hmm. I have undergone such, I want to say abuse, but it's like, I have seen way too many uh, uh, cruelty Mm -hmm. and cruel abuse. Uh, not towards me, but towards other people yep. that I was like, yeah, no, I, I'll be here. Yep. <laughs> and um, it took me a while to even consider streaming, and Jack just kept pushing it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you're, you've been my friend for... 11 years going on 12 Jesus Christ that is that's a lifelong friendship if any <laughs> yeah but um but then it's like okay at like the only time I really got paranoid about it was because when I started hitting like trying to hit the goal of philia I, I was looking at the numbers and yeah. learned that's like the biggest mistake you could ever yep. do because paranoia goes up higher and uh oof. yeah hot tip for anyone that wants a stream don't look at the viewer numbers you're you're going to stress yourself out hard well that's also why i advise people to not get soaked into the the addictive self-destructive behavior of feeling validation through likes and hitting the like button because it's yeah, it's a like, very vicious cycle to be to be to to link one's worth with a click of a button. Yeah. Um like uh you you brought up Danny, of course. Yep. When Danny shot me 10 gift subs, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh my god. What yeah. are you doing, sir?" Well, luckily you shot ended up <laughs> knowing like Ginja's and JC's and Danny's circles are really supportive especially with um with people that are just starting out and um because i remember like i linked danny your page because i um because you sent me um because we were going through your vtuba stuff and you sent me the hoodie and danny has a thing with hoodies and i wanted to like customize one and i wanted to show him like i am capable i'm not just talking to my ass so i was like here check out vo and um because and also like i was really happy to um i was really happy to sh- start like sending links of, of your stuff to people i know because i was like again i like to do that in general and why i even do this playlist is because i get that in a lot of ways people have that nervousness of like oh if i feature a person and they're more interesting than me they might watch them instead of me and for me i just don't care for that because for me i'm just as excited as a viewer when anybody's on so, and I rather help than just be so insecure of people like lo- losing views for people who might might be better than me in the sense of like when I say that I remember I don't believe in good or bad or better or worse. I meant in the sense of like in some people's eyes of like oh this person's more entertaining or something that you know it's just I don't really care for that because I'm just happy if someone stops by says hello and actually likes my work and not just likes me because I'm trending. So yeah, I get for a marketing sense. That's not the greatest. The whole view thing and shit is my art, but when it's my YouTube and stuff, it's, it's nice to slowly grow and meet new people. There's something about certain like names or, 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 um, avatars that kind of click where it has like an interest i don't know what it is but then i just there was just something about you one day that it's like your name always popped up everywhere but then i just went in there and just was like yeah no i'm gonna check this person out and certainly not disappointed and have had a lot of you know i've had a lot of fun with just either talking or uh um when i first had you on to play the board game and stuff and that's why i wanted to have you on here because it's it is exciting but mostly because i wanted to show that you know you are among the many hidden gems that i have been um fortunate enough to come across and i would like people who are, who like my stuff to you know give you a check out just as the other people i featured so um yeah i i think one thing that you stated quite clearly that kind of made me memorable after the first board game uh test 
hopefully future to come, <laughs> <laughs> um, was you were expecting me to tear you apart. Yes. But me, um, I view game design in a more professional viewpoint, which means anything has possibilities. Any, um, like, there are good ideas, there's bad ideas, and then there are ideas that you could just easily look at and go, well, this works, this doesn't work, what could we tweak? Mm -hmm. Like, you have a solid groundwork, what could we tweak on that? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Ugh. I but, realized yeah, that I'm... segment went on quite a long time, and I'm so sorry for that, because I, 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 you know what's worse? Like, I had a feeling that when we were going to be put together in an interview, that's why in the beginning I was doing pretty good. I was like, just quickly ask the questions, let him do the talking. Because I was like, God, it's going to be like we're going to start talking, and it's never going to stop. <laughs> Like, shit, we were talking about that. It went into three different segments, and I'm like, okay, let's get back on track. <laughs> yeah, I had a feel. I, well, I, I was doing so thing. well. I just had to. Is it... <laughs> okay, Here, here's the thing. Isn't it a uh, good way to show a person's personality just by talking to them? I know it's just like, like, the, dude. It's when we were even talking, like. Do, we even brought up like well we talked about this before we talked about this before we talked there's a lot of shit we've talked about and it's like shit i gotta make sure i'm keeping it vague enough oh, so the people know lot. you know so it's because we text i'm asking you things i technically already know but the people don't um what is your driving force behind the creativity what makes you want to keep creating oh that's a fun one um so i'm a storyteller I have always been a storyteller, and um, it's pretty much an addiction to me. <laughs> I I just love creating stories. It's why Dungeons and Dragons and World of Darkness, other pen and paper games that I have played stuck with me for such a long time. Because, like, here's the deal. Um what is Dungeons and Dragons really? It's collaborative storytelling with um, risk. <laughs> risk being your character could die or risk on the GM side. You might have, you might do something that will throw off the entire campaign. And the thing is I'm adaptable because of that. And oh man. And it's sort of the thing that creating stories, even for myself, um, myself being uh, my character, <laughs> um, I'm just not going to stop. And part of it is like, I crave, I crave things that are not monotonous, you know, like, not repetitive. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. Uh, ah! Thought... <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, it's part of the reason why I am thinking of putting down a redeem on my channel of like tell a D, D story or tell a story of what uh, happened in some of my rpgs um because there is a crap ton of memorable things that i will never ever forget ever because they were either that epic or that silly level of stupid that it just became kind of staple um, like, example being our cleric striking a deal with the devil. That was really fucking awesome. <laughs> well, because... I'll be asking you questions like that in the next interview, so that's also the 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 part of, like, when people, if they really are wanting to learn it's more about it, but that's, it's, it, if you do a redeem, then... It's not a part of <laughs> Well, if you do a redeem, though, then it's like, you kind of naturally do that, so it's like... Well, this is true. Well, I'm just saying it's like, um, oh, what is it? Well, I mean, that's part of, like, 
watching the VODs, but it's, it's, um, at least you remember them so you can keep telling the story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because if people are going to be, like, and randomly what? redeeming it, like, say, like, you tell the story last week and then, like, people redeem it three, four times in one stream <laughs> or something, like, not for a sp- that specific story, oh, but no. storytelling it, in general. It's, it, it, there's going to be, like, a daily limit, like, maybe once a stream yeah. or, uh, once every couple of days. The tale of the day. because tale of the day tale of the week because you know there are times that i will repeat and you know which is not a bad thing people are always you know newcomers so yeah yeah newcomers i was actually about to say that (laughs) newcomers and stuff like they will want to know about my angry as hell um mercenary mel or um and the klutzy as hell um, doctor or Scarlet, Jesus. <laughs> Let's just say Scarlet, wonderful character, bad dice rolls all the time. <laughs> so, what does your ch- what um what uh, stop stuttering? Sorry. What ch- <laughs> what channel? Okay, hold on. So, what does your channel offer viewers, or at least what is your focus? Of, from your content like what is your content focus of what you you put out and what you want people to see well firstly right now i could easily say that it's a little bit everywhere at this moment um so i am a variety streamer i play almost anything i like to find old games or games that are long forgotten as well as um unusual and i don't go for triple a titles not commonly anyway like um because like honestly everyone plays triple a everyone plays call of duty and i'm like i don't like call of duty See, now that's why I, I, like, I, just really quick interjection that's also why i i i guess i gravitated towards your stuff because i did that with my channel and that's sort of nice because like People just, I, I, they never heard of these fucking games in most cases. So when I saw yours, you introduced me to fucking games. I, and some of them you knew, which was even a bigger shock. So, but go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to interject that. <laughs> well, I showed you how big my library is. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem. I, mm, He was very I, proud to I, show I, how big his library is. <laughs> how expansive. Uh, here we go. <laughs> but, um. So I do try to find the most unusual things out there. Yeah. And even the ones that are most talked about. And, like, there are some games that I find that I kind of go, why isn't this more popular? This, that's... And now you know how I see you and the people that I, I like to interview. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, really. Um, But, like... At some point, and I am actually being pushed to do this, which is pretty fun, um, I actually plan to do a Thursday night D&D stream um, with a bunch of my old players. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Like, if I get a new player, I really have to explain that... My games are dark. Yeah. And and I do kind of horror themed um D&D games. Mm. Not like um like uh for example, I did give some of my players heart attacks because they are they are so attached to their characters. Also, I'm excited for the going... next interview because I have a lot of questions about those. <laughs> Hey, deep dive into the content. This is just getting to know you. So this is enjoy the enjoy the simpleness because it's going to take a deep dive into the, the, the some of the stories I've heard. But I really want my viewers to hear what I've heard. <laughs> Be careful of the rabbit hole. You'll never come out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Um, I am very much a storyteller. I am. Very talkative, more than I thought I would be mm-hmm. on stream. 
And I think that's kind of partly because it, it's easy to see names that show up in chat and just talk with that rather than talk to a person right in front of you. It mm -hmm. It's an anxiety thing. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it, it's weird. I actually enjoy streaming and never quite knew why, so to say. <laughs> and still, all I th think about it going like, why am I having fun? And I think I'm kind of on Ginger's level of of the, I never knew I would have this fun doing this. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. And, and the last question, where can people find you? Okay. Um, people could find me on on um, Twitch TV slash Viotritz. Um, Links will be in the description below. Be Below. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus, so I can speak. <laughs> uh, yeah, not down there. Down there. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, if people catch that, then they're just as dirty-minded as me. Thank you. If they stuck around this long, it's just, they should just get, they should just realize what they're watching. If they didn't understand by the thumbnail, then I just pity them. Oh, yeah. Too much so. But, um, <laughs> I am putting together a YouTube channel for um, some of my VODs and clips that I'm still unsure how I will do this, but I know I'm going to put my D&D uh, stuff on there a la podcast on yep. the channel Raccoon Living Room. Um. Yeah, Raccoon Living Room on uh, YouTube. Okay. And and I will post the D&D &D stuff, a la podcasts on Spotify and stuff. I don't know what I would name that. Um, It's work in progress. I probably keep the same name, so Raccoon Living Room, even in that. Yeah. I'll I'll say otherwise if, if it becomes otherwise, but okay. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the end of the first interview, but wait for the next one. We will deep dive into the haunted cabin and the world of Vio and his creations. But for now, Vio, would you like to say anything else, any parting words before we end? It is there the haunted is... cabin, right? Oh, yeah. No. Okay. I thought uh... I fucked that. I'm sorry. Like, Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I had, <laughs> I had a hint of anxiety. And it's I'm like, the haunted it is the haunted log cabin. You're not Fuck! wrong. I knew I met. I knew I fucking left something out. <laughs> no. Look, go ahead, haunted go ahead. cabin, haunted log I'm cabin. Just it traffic. works. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me throw something at you, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's an axe. Um. <laughs> but if you're okay, if, if you Morticia. watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation, it really that wasn't even fatal. <laughs> Yeah, part of me is still going okay, Morticia, on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that, now, the the links will be in the description below, but if there's any additives or anything else that Vio makes and wants um me to add in there, they again, links will be in the description below of where to find him, and most of all, like, the Twitch. Uh, again, like, with any of these interviews, it's I just want to show you, the view is that, like, I do come across, like, these hidden gems that just, honestly, if you have any interest in, like, my content, chances are you might like theirs. It's, I mean, especially, like, you know, VOs, I mean, if you're going to want to go with, it, it, even if what I can't provide you with storytelling, he will. Because, for me, I do my usual, like, short videos or no mic matches, so he will provide the content, like Danny, with the conversation and, uh, um... Uh, uh, oh, fuck. What is the word? All the things? I'm trying to think know. of, like, the word for, ta like, talking and comment commentary with videos. There we I was go. trying to think of the damn word. Yep, yep. But, all right. This is Nick Tana. This is Vio. Hello. So. <laughs> and have a great week. Oh, do you have a sentence? Wait, did you have something to say? Expect me to be shouting out Nick Tana a lot. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm supposed to be shouting you out. You're taking it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great week.